Hey, it's Brandon from Lakeside Survival. Today, we're going to be making a survival zipper bite slash zipper pool, whatever you prefer to call it. And the resources for it are pretty inexpensive. And most of you probably have it just laying around. Um, here is some 550 cord. Uh, it's specific, specifically exactly two feet of 550 paracord. And all you need is some sort of lighter some electrical tape, whatever pound test that you'd like, just not too heavy. Uh, here I have some cheap 10 pound test. Some Aberdeen hooks or other small hooks, these are size four. And you will need something that can cut the paracord when you need to. And here I have a pair of scissors and my Swiss Army knife. Now, without further ado, let's dive straight in. So, first thing you're gonna do Take your two ends, put them together, and draw out and find your middle. Take your middle, pull it back up around, and go probably, I don't know, what's that? A little over two thumb lengths, close to, I don't know, maybe a little less. We'll eye it. And all you're simply going to do at the very, very start of it all is, here I guess I should show you. I'm assuming you know. All you do is take, you take it, pinch it right here in the middle, both strands equal length, and you take your left strand, put it over top of them all, take your right strand, bring it over top of the strand you just brought, pull it all behind and under, and pull it back out this loop, and tighten both sides, trying to keep your close estimate. And there you go. So let's see here. Yeah, that'll. Eh. We've been made a little too big, so let's take her down. It's pretty easy to adjust. And I'll tighten it up again. And there, see, this is what happens when you just eye stuff. Stuff goes wrong. <laughs> so, there we go. That's probably. It's about a thumb's length. That's good enough. Now, the next thing we'll do is we will take out, let's get our scissors ready here, but we will take out our electrical tape. It's cold, man. Even the electrical tape's frozen. <laughs> Cut off a section, uh, probably about that long right there. And we will set it right here. Let's move our, a little more space out of here. And we are going to get out a few of our Aberdeen hooks here. Or whatever hook you want to use. I just prefer Aberdeen. They're a good survival hook. Easy to catch bluegills on and stuff. You can catch bass on them too. It's just a little challenging. Uh, we'll see if we can get three on there. If not, no biggie. One hook's better than none. So put your hook on, put your other hook on, you want to try and like put them like they're cradling each other and that'll make it a little bit easier to get it all tied around at the very end. Now we can take the bottom piece of our electrical tape, bring it up over and then the top part, bring it up over and then lay it, you see right there on our thing. And now here, we're gonna take a little bit more electrical tape, put it right on top, and go around it once or twice. I think we'll do twice, just to make sure it's good and on there. And we'll cut it off. We won't need the electrical tape anymore now, it's all just wrapping. All right, now the next thing to do is to wrap our line around our zipper pull or zipper bite. And we're just gonna tie a quick overhand knot. And gotta get my teeth in there. Pull her down, go one more time. If you don't know a knot, tie a lot. <laughs> 
and that will be good enough. We can just cut off our excess here. Now we can wrap around however much your heart desires around here because this will be your fishing line for if you ever need, and hopefully you don't, but if you ever need to actually need to rip open your zipper pool. And we're just going to try and wrap this all the way up and down the electrical tape. The electrical tape kind of gives a grip and in the same way our fishing line packs down the electrical tape making it easier to tie or not over top of in the long run. So it's really in your best interest you go up and down the whole thing. <clears throat> you don't have to put too much line on there. Probably just enough for a cane pole which is all you need for catching bluegill and crappie and really like trick chubs. The real survival fish. You're not going to be like big cat fishing unless you've got the resources for it along with this. And you're not going to be trying to land massive bass or anything like that. So all you need is a little line. Cut that there and tie another overhand. Alright. That'll do. And we're going to take and cut off a tiny little piece of electrical tape here. From our camera view. There we go. We're just going to put it right there just to make sure our line doesn't end up rolling all off. And now we can continue to make our zipper pull or zipper bite. So you have to alternate constantly to keep it to be a cobra stitch. So I'll show you what to do on that. So every time you see like a bump here, you see how on this side there's this coil that's up. You want to take that loop and put another loop there and then bring it over and under and through. And then on this side, now the bump is over here. So you're just going to do the same thing over, under, through, back and forth until we've reached our desired length, which should just be a knot or two more. Now, to hide the electrical tape, we can wiggle this down and push the knot a little more over top of the electrical tape. It's kind of a cheating way to hide it in there, or at least not make it look so tacky, honestly. But that is nearly the finished project. Now, to finish, paracord melts. So you cut off pretty close to this, I won't call it a stem, but the end of the paracord, if I can get it. There we go. And sorry for hitting the camera there. It's like an earthquake. <laughs> so now this is where your lighter comes in handy. If I can get it to light, maybe. And then you melt down your ends. I think I need a new lighter here. <laughs> Melt it down, get a little spit on your thumb, and press it in, and then we will do the same to this side. I mean, no tutorial is really necessary on how to finish the paracord project. It's pretty, pretty simple, pretty easy. Just don't burn yourself, and if you do, you'll heal. <laughs> You see, I'm, I'm out of juice, I think. Maybe it's just too cold. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what it is. I think it's too cold for the big lighter to work because I've got it by my hands. And I'm heating it up. We're getting it to light again. <laughs> that's crazy. Oh, the wind got her. So 
See, this is why Bix do not make survival fire starters. They are nearly worthless for real survival tasks. That's why I always carry a ferrocerium rod. Don't have to worry about getting the ferrocerium rod wet. Here, I'm gonna have to go out of camera view to finish this because the wind is just too rough on it. But seriously though, that's why you gotta carry a ferrocerium rod or a flint and steel, or something of that nature. All right, and there she is. Uh, to put it on, let's see here. I got something to demonstrate it on. I will pull out my my knife. I got it zipped up in my coat here, so give me a second. Speaking of the ferro rods, this is the knife I have that has the ferro serum rod in it. But just as show of how the zipper pull works is, you put it through the loop of your zipper or whatever, and you pull the bite back through the loop and pull it tight. And there you go. That's all you have to do. Pretty simple, pretty quick, and gets you the fishing line hooks you need to sustain yourself in a survival situation.